All right, so we're back with another video. Um, that's what I had to do today. I had to re-bleed my brick. From a beginning in the most I rise. Still King Selassie and burn them likewise. Now bow to them system when I promote life. I love conquer all to survive. The youth of side the lion of King Judah's tribe. And then the king of king of Ethiopian pride. Because there was a, uh, I don't know what happened. I can't even, I don't even understand what even caused it. But there was tension on the pad and the rotor. So I just re-bled the brakes because, well, the first thing I did was um, loosen up my master cylinder because I put a new master cylinder on it, and you have a pin that goes inside. So out of the hydro boost, there's a pin, and then in your master cylinder, there's a pin that goes in it. And sometimes you have to shave that pin down and make adjustments. I didn't have to do that because when I put the MC on, it um, it went flush. So I didn't have to really, I didn't have to make any adjustments. So I checked that first. So when I went in back in today, I checked that and it was pretty much the same thing. And when I pulled the MC off away from the pin, uh, the calipers were still tight and all of them were tight. I thought it was just the back one, but all of them were tight. So I pulled them all out. This is the last one I got to bleed. This one is, is pretty free now, but um, this is the last one I got to bleed. So I'm gonna bleed that one in a minute. It started raining on me and then I'm just go ahead and finish everything else up that I got to uh, to finish. But just to give you guys a little insight on their rear end. You can see I got the Gertie back there, and I got a Detroit um, True Track Posi um, 28 spline custom exhaust. Of course, I got the QA1 coilovers. Um, I gotta adjust my front coilovers too. I'm gonna do a video. I'm gonna probably add that to this video. But I got to raise my car up about a half an inch. But what I didn't do on the front, what I did do on the back, see I have three shims. So you have a shim that sits in the middle that has rollers on it. So when you adjust it, it's kind of easier to do. I didn't put them on the front. I didn't think I was gonna be adjusting them as much, but I, I've now adjusted the front more than I've adjusted the back. And let me tell you, if you don't have those on there, it's hell. You know what I mean? So yeah, I'm not gonna pull them all the way off just to put them on there at this point. But if I ever do another car with cool they definitely gonna get that all the way around. So as you can see, this is a um, eight and a half rear end that came with drum brakes. And I converted it to um, disc brakes. So what I have here is uh, Z06 calipers. I have um, Z06 rollers. I also have a spacer, but I'm gonna take this out because when they go to get painted, my homeboy get in there, he gonna paint it for me. But I'm also having frame notches. So once he frame notches, I won't need these um, these spacers. But um, I also got the custom, you know, the Moser axles, 28 spline joints, I already mentioned that. And there's a bracket that my, my man get in there and makes. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but it's what the caliper is on. This little bracket right here. You know that uh, he makes that, and what I'm about to get him to do is make a um, excuse my hand, make a um, a bracket for this e brake setup. So he could do two brackets for me. Um, one he could add a bracket, so I could just do a regular the regular Z06 um, e brake with the with the of course with the cable. But we went to see him the other day, and we saw some e brake setups where they're electric. You know, so you had, you know, if you ever look at some of the Teslas or some of the sports cars, you see they have two calipers on the rear end. That's because the other caliper is for the e-brake. So, um, I'm going to run, that's, that's pretty much how I'm going to run mine, you know, here in a minute when I do, because right now I don't have any e-brake. So the other day I was pulling my joint off the trailer and I was at the shop though and, um, forgot I didn't have the, I didn't have any brakes that's why I took them to the shop to get the brakes done but I didn't have an e-brake either so the guy let the I put the car in gear after the guy took the tension off the um off the off the uh chain and the car just ran down the back of the trailer and hit the building but luckily you know the guys out there he caught it I don't know man that dude was strong as hell because he got behind the car and he slowed it down so when it hit the building it didn't hit it too tight it didn't hit it too hard so um didn't dent up anything either so that's what, what what we're doing here. So you know, I got the Z06 bricks here, and get in there also makes a bracket. 
um, for that. So what you have on the front is I have a, um, I think it's a 98 to 02 Chevy Blazer Splendle. So I'm also running the Chevy Blazer Hub. So that way I do away with the um, the, the entire setup for the G-Bike. I do away with that. So this is a complete um, 80, I mean 98 to 02 Chevy Splendle with the um also with the same with the with the matching hub or the Chevy hub and but this is a Z06 14 inch roller with of course the Z06 brakes and a man get in there makes a bracket for that too. So he also got the if you want to go with the Brembros, you want to go with the Camaro Brembros setups on your car, he he also has brackets for those as well that he makes. So I'm about to bleed this last wheel here. And um get to the front so I can adjust this coil over because I also have the um you can't really see it but I have the QA1 control arms up and lower I got the the Umi sway bar and what I had to do also is I got a bump steer kit so when I hit bumps um the steering wheel jerk almost jerks out my hand so I'm gonna lift it up a little bit um, and then I'm gonna have the guys put that bump steer kit on it. I got a you and my bump steer kit. So I add that to the car too, so that should eliminate most, if not all, of my bump steer. And then, you know, we are pretty much that be it. You know, because I've been talking about getting this joke of the paint and interior forever. So, but once I do that, I'll be pretty much done with the car because I'm not gonna swap this one. We're gonna swap that 96 SS and Apollo we about to scoop up. So, I'm gonna finish up this, this uh, bleeding of this caliper. And then I'm gonna get to the um, to lowering the uh, coil loads on the front, and then that'd be it for the video. And then I'm gonna take the car to the shop so they can put the bumps on there and and realign the car. I'm gonna get back with y'all in a minute. All right, so I'm about to um, make some adjustments to these coil overs, but I noticed the car was running a little uh, rich at idle. Um, so I made some adjustments to my translator. So I got the mass airflow translator and um, I have my settings because I don't have the extended chip now. I'm running the turbo tweaks chip. So I have my settings set for a non uh, extended chip setting on here. So I just adjusted it because I had it running 10% rich at idle. So now I got it running, um, let me see, let me see. I had it running 10% rich add on four because I have a three inch um, mass airflow sensor so now I'm gonna have it running 10% lean at idle so um, cause I'm getting a little bit of smoke and what I noticed with these cars um, they don't like cold weather for one and then two um, when I first got this car when it was cold it would not stay on so you have you, know, you have to you know, hold the gas until the car warmed up so I swapped the, um, the O2 sensor and I changed my spark plugs and it would fire up every time. So it's been about a year. I haven't really driven, I haven't driven the car that much at all. I might've driven the car 15 miles in the last year, but um, it's starting to be hard at, to uh, start. I know the weather's changed a little bit, but being that it um, it smokes, it was smoking a little bit, running a little, like I said, running a little bit rich. Um, it might've, you know, Dirty up the O2 sensor. I don't know. I'm gonna pull it and I'm gonna see, and I'm gonna change, check my spark plugs again and see how they look. And I might just swap them out because I like, you know, when I hit the key one time, the car usually fires up. So the last time I did this, all I did was just change the, um, change the uh, the spark plug. So I might be what I do this time because I, even though I don't drive the car, I'm starting it a lot, starting and stopping it a lot, and it's idling a lot. So I'm probably gonna change the um, spark plugs again. But I just made that adjustment to the uh, to the um, translator, so I'm gonna see if that'll bring down some of the smoke because you know the smoke. I just don't like that that gassy smell. But um, but I'm about to see how those adjustments went, and then I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna do. I made the adjustment, and as you can see, there's there's no smoke. No exhaust fume smell. Before you can see the smoke back up into the garage. So once 
times I had to open the door and get it out. But no smoke. So again, man, these cars are very, very, very finicky. And I love it for that. I mean, not for nothing. It just gives me something to do on the weekend. Be, uh, be 100%. So that's why I kind of left the car so. Um, so yeah, I'm about to put my top back on and make a few more adjustments to the TPS. It's at 44. They say they recommend between they recommend between 40 and 44. It's at 44 now, but I'm put it at 42. I just feel comfortable at 42. But the way you adjust the TPS, got a position sensor. Again, just undo, undo those two screws here. You just slightly tap on it, and you'll see where it's at with your scan master. All right. So, as I said earlier, messing with these coilovers. Let me see if it's focused. All right. So, I got my locking nut there, and this is the nut that actually slides. But as you can see, I only have one. I only have one um, shim on here. And man, let me tell you, I'm over here struggling, boy. I might have moved that joker too. You see how that small black gap is? That's about as much as I moved it. So I'm gonna be here for a while. So I'm gonna do that side and that side, and that should be straight. But um, but yeah, this is what we do. I got oil leak back there. I thought that was coming from that turbo, but it might be the um, the rear seal. But um, but I got to investigate that too and find out. <laughs> cause yeah, cause whatever it is leaking down on that pipe. And then, but you also have a leak here too. So what I'm thinking is the rear seal being how much oil is leaking. I don't really drive the car that much, but in any event, I got the hole back where it's supposed to be with the turbo. So that part is fine. And if that is the rear seal, then it's gonna have to leak until I decide to rebuild this motor. But now, I'm back to this car. All right, so I raised it a little bit. About, uh, maybe about a quarter inch. That, I just opened my, my uh, coolant reservoir. That's all that was. And, then, and some of the coolant got out. But um, but yeah, I raised it by the quarter inch. So I'm gonna see how much, how much it stops rubbing before I put these bump steel, before I put these bump steel kit on it. So once I get the bump steel kit on it, then it really tell the tail. About to drive it, see what we're doing today. But um, yeah, as you can see, no brake light, re, re bled the brakes. So um, I guess that reset my proportionate valve or I pulled the safety, I pulled the, the trigger out of the proportionate valve and put it back in. I guess that reset it after <coughs> I bled the brakes. So my brakes are fine for now. Again, we're gonna test driving and see what we got going on. And uh, that concludes this video. I'm gonna get back with you.